Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, my name is Pastor Carlos Rivera with New Life Outreach International Church in Richmond, Virginia. So glad you're being part of this program. Want to welcome all the Walking in the Spirit family that joins me every single morning at 7 a.m. Listen, the Bible says, early in the morning, I will rise up and seek you. That's God's word. And of course, David was a man of God. That's actually in the Psalms. And David was a man after God's own heart. And he knew how important it was to stay connected through God in prayer. So this morning, as we're all coming on board, I want to thank you so much for being part of this past week. This week has been amazing. The Lord has been so good. He's provided peace. He's provided so much joy. And it's been really good because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we need that joy, God's joy, that's unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Well, praise God. Listen, I want to get right into our Bible study this morning. And of course, I've entitled our time together, Eternity is Our Objective. Drop that in the chat right now. Eternity is our objective. Let's pray quickly here before we get started. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Let it minister to our hearts this morning. Your word is active. It's always doing something. So we believe you, God, for this morning to do a great work in our lives through your word and through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Listen, eternity is our objective. Look what Colossians 3 verse 2 has to say. As a matter of fact, drop that in the chat. Colossians 3 verse 2. And God's word says this, set your mind on things above, not on things on this earth. Wow. Paul is writing this letter to the church at Colossae, right? The Colossians church. And he's telling them to stay focused on the things of earth. Uh, I'm sorry, the things on heaven and not the things of earth. See, uh, drop this in the chat right now if you're taking notes. Store up treasures in heaven by leading others there. I believe when we keep a mindset, because that's what Paul is talking about, a heavenly mindset that sees everything through the lens of eternity. See, the enemy will try and always will try to distract you with earthly battles. So many things that will keep your mind on the things here that will distract us from what God is trying to propose and trying to do in our lives, right? See, we need to stay focused on the war that's in the heavenlies. We need to understand that everything that's happening on this earth is already being manifested in the spirit realm. So it, it gets to the spirit realm first before it comes down and becomes a reality here. So we need to fight in the heavenlies, on our knees, believing and trusting God for the victory. You see, the real battle is for the souls of men. Drop that in the chat right now. The real battle is for the souls of men. You see, we can get so caught up on these earthly battles. We can get so caught up on winning arguments with people that we actually lose them. See, we, we win the argument, but we lose the person. So it doesn't make any sense, right? We have to use wisdom and understanding and use God's word, but we have to pray and put a covering over those folks before we speak to them so that the Holy Spirit will prepare their hearts and break that hardened soil of their hearts to be ready to and prepared to, re, to receive the seed of God's word. You see, we need to uh, demonstrate radical love that's right, and allow God to love them through us. See, God wants to use us as a vessel of his love, a vessel of his grace and mercy. So we need to make sure that before we can speak into people's hearts, they need to know that we love them and we care about them as well. Listen, drop this in the chat right now. Walk with your feet on earth, but your heart in heaven. With your feet on earth, but your heart in heaven so important for us to be able to be the mouthpiece that God wants us to be because it's through our mouth that miracles happen. It's, it's through your confession of who Jesus Christ was that you, you, you got saved, right? The Bible says when you believe in your heart 
And of course, when you declare it, when you confess it with your mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. And that's so important that we have to declare our miracles. Drop that in the chat right now. Declare your miracle. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37 of God's word says this, for by, you, by your words, you'll be justified and by your words, you'll be condemned. See, you need to, you need to understand that your words carry a lot of weight. See, we need to speak life and not death. We need to speak the things that are positive, not negative. You know, God's word uh, says that you, to, when you speak, the tongue is the hardest thing to tame because it, so many vile things can come out of our mouths. The Bible says, how can, how can sweet waters and bitter waters come out of the same fountain? <laughs> Amen. And you got to remember that the enemy responds to what you say. Come on, drop that in the chat right now. Your enemy responds to what you say. See, the devil will believe whatever you tell him. So many times when we're whining and complaining and not understanding that when we begin to speak these negative things, the enemy is listening as well. And you see, we need to learn how to speak faith words. When you speak words of faith and words of declaration of God's word, the enemy is crushed. The enemy doesn't want you to speak those words because it, it, it totally destroys the work that he's trying to accomplish in our lives. You see, if you talk like a victim, you'll become one. Oh, drop that in the chat. If you talk like a victim, you'll become one. See, speak words of defeat and the enemy will attack. That's right. But when you speak words of victory, the Bible says resist the devil and he's going to flee. You see, attack the devil with God's words and he'll be demoralized. That's right. That's why the sword of the spirit, God's word is so important. We need to declare things out of our mouths, even the miracles that we want from God. That's right. If you need a miracle right now, begin to declare it. Sure, the enemy is going to oppose it. People will come against you. Your flesh won't believe it. But in the name of Jesus, if you declare it out of your mouth and begin to speak it, you can speak things into existence. Amen. Listen, write this in the chat. Let your words create the atmosphere for victory. Let your words create the atmosphere for victory. See, we also need to understand that your seed, what not, your words are seed, but you also can bring seed, come on somebody, to bring as your defense. That's right, when I'm talking about seed, I'm also talking about giving, about planting seeds. See, in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, God's word says, bring ye, the, uh, bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. You see, your seed, drop this in the, in the chat, your offering is your starting point. Oh, man, that's right. Your offering is your starting point. You see, your seed is a starting point as well. If you're going to start a plant, if you, if you want to start a, a harvest in your life, then it starts with a seed. That's the starting point. That's where you begin. See, your seed is a signal. It's a message. It telegraphs your opinion, your hopes, and your love for God. That's right. Planting the seed, believing God for a harvest shows you that shows God that you trust him. That's right. Your seed faith offering is also a weapon. That's right. It's a weapon against the enemy. It's the weapon against materialism. It's 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 a weapon that that fights off other things that are trying to become priorities and are trying to take the place of God. Because your seed shows that God is first in your life. See, Jesus was touched by the poor widow that gave a little, but she gave all that she had. That, had, that got Jesus' attention as he was standing there at the altar. He saw people bringing their, their, their offerings before the Lord. But when that lady moved his heart, because it wasn't that it was a large amount, but it was all that she had and she gave out of her need and she gave out of her faith, planting a seed that God would meet her need. You see, your offering has an impact on God's heart. Just like Jesus was impacted by that lady's uh, offering that she brought, God also is impacted and his heart is moved 
when you bring him an offering as well, believing and trusting him for great and mighty things. And you know, I believe that some, that, that, that giving also is a faith builder. It begins to build our faith in all kinds of ways. As a matter of fact, uh, it's the kind of faith that we have that believes God even when we don't understand what's going on. Listen, except, uh, drop that in the chat right now. Accept what you don't understand. Listen, I know it's not easy. We want to be able to kind of wrap our minds around things, but there are times when we just can't understand it. And sometimes there's, uh, there's no explanation for why things happen. And I think a lot of times, even if we had the explanation, it always wouldn't change the impact that it has on our hearts. See, Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9 of God's word says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. See, we don't understand how God does stuff or why it happens. And you know, sometimes we're praying for a miracle and it seems like it comes out of left field, like it doesn't come the way we expected it. And the results weren't always what we thought it would be. You see, drop this in the chat. You select your miracle, but God chooses the process. Oh, come on, somebody drop that in the chat. You select your miracle, but God chooses the process. You see, the Lord decides how he's going to send that miracle to you. Jesus used clay and spit, come on somebody, in the healing of a blind man. I mean, that had to be awkward. Imagine what people were looking around him going, man, what is Jesus doing? See, his methods are puzzling to the natural mind. Like, why would he do that? I believe that many times Jesus used various ways of bringing miracles and healings because he wanted to establish the fact that God doesn't always do it the way you expect. Come on, drop that in the chat right now. God doesn't always do it the way you expect. But when he does, there's always a method to the madness. Come on, somebody. When we can't understand, we just have to accept it and receive it. You see, when God performs a miracle, it requires faith to receive it. That's right, God does something. We have to have the faith to trust God and give God the freedom to do it the way he wants to do it. We need to understand that God is a sovereign God and how he chooses to manifest a miracle in your life is really up to him. But we have to have the faith to just receive it and accept it any way he does it. We need to understand that God's hands are always open to give. God is a generous God. He's not holding back on us. God is always open to give, but sometimes our attitude's not in the right place, our heart's not in the right place. Maybe our intentions aren't always there either, but know that God is always able and willing to give us what we need. You see, those, question, those that question the method of God rarely receive their miracles. Oh, come on, drop that in the chat. If you question the method of God, it's hard to receive a miracle from God. Give God the freedom through the Holy Spirit to make things come to pass. It may not be the way you want it, but it will be the right way because God's way is always the right way. Amen. Well, praise God. Listen, if you receive something from God's word this morning, make, sh make sure that you share it. Hit the share button and make sure the word gets out today as well. Amen. Listen, let's take time to pray right now. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you and we give you glory and honor this morning, oh God. You are such a good God, such an awesome and mighty God. and We worship you and glorify your name. And Father, in Jesus' name, help us to keep our mindset on eternity. To know, Lord God, that men's souls are at stake. So Lord, in Jesus' name, we know there's war in the heavenlies. So Father God, help us to stay focused on our eternal calling, our eternal assignment, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that we will not be distracted by the things of this world, Lord God, but that we'll continue to seek you and know that there is eternal value and there's an eternal cost. And most of all, there's an eternal reward 
to keep our eyes and minds focused on you. And Father God, today we declare miracles. We speak them into effect right now. If you need a miracle, declare it right now. Speak it into the heavenlies. In the name of Jesus, we stand upon your promises, O oh God, because we know that some miracles are completely supernatural, and all of them are, but we know that some of your miracles are tied to your promises. So we declare those promises right now and we thank you. We receive these miracles and these healings as well, Lord God. And Father God, thank you that we can use our seed as a weapon. That our seed, Lord God, as we give to you, Lord God, your word says that you will rebuke the devourer for our sake. So we can give, Lord God, expecting for the battle to be won, Lord God, because you will intervene in our circumstances. That's your word and that's your promise. So we thank you that our best defense, Lord God, is to bring our offerings to you, Lord God, and invite you into our battles in Jesus' name. And Father God, help us. Help us to understand, Lord God, circumstances around us. But even, even if we don't, oh God, help us to accept it, Lord God, and to trust you for the things that we don't understand. Some things are painful, oh God. Some things we can't explain in Jesus' name. But Lord, we trust you in this moment, Lord God. And we thank you for the victory in advance, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for my brother Romel today and Alicia I pray you will be with them, Lord God. We don't understand why his mother passed away and his father passed away a week later, Lord God. We don't know what happened. We don't, it makes no sense to us, oh God. But Lord, be their comfort, be their strength, Lord God. And give them, Lord God, the trust and the faith that they need. And see them through this time of loss in Jesus' name. And Father God, we thank you for your miracle working power. We thank you for saving those right now on our prayer list that need salvation. We receive it done right now in Jesus' name. And Father God, we pray for salvation. We pray for your divine healing right now, Lord. We pray that even now your freedom, we pray chains will be broken, Lord God, that healings will be manifested. It's by your stripes that we are healed. We declare that promise over them right now. We thank you that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. We thank you, Father God, for your provision, for your divine provision, for providing for every need according to your riches and glory. We thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in the lives of all those that we're praying for on a regular basis, so oh God. And we thank you for the victory, for restoration, Lord God, of marriages and relationships. Lord, we pray for every need represented here today of every family that's represented here today for our family, our friends, and our colleagues. And Father, we just thank you for the victory in advance. Come on, put your hands together. Thank the Lord for the victory. We receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy this morning. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, I always end every gathering with the word of God. Of course, today's word is found in Psalms uh, chapter 84, verses 10 through 12. And God's word says this, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. <laughs> what a beautiful psalm. What a word of an encouraging word, of course, that displays the heart of a worshiper, the heart of David who wrote this. He'd rather be in his courts than anywhere else. Hallelujah. In the courts of the Lord. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. And God is the God that blesses us. Amen. Especially those like you and I who put our trust in him. Amen. Well, praise God. Listen, thank you so much for joining me. This whole week has been amazing. I pray that you have a blessed 
and wonderful weekend. Listen, enjoy your family and enjoy the favor of the Lord, the blessing that God has for you as well. And always remember that when you're walking in the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Amen. God bless you. Lord willing, I'll see you again Monday morning at 7 a.m. right here on Walking in the Spirit. God bless you.